Peter, thank you so much for taking time to be with me today for our Speaking Truth to Youth series. I'm just going to ask pleasure. you a few questions. My first one, I know you've been pretty clear that you don't see yourself as an activist, but I I do see you as an activist because I think you speak truth and you tackle some pretty tough issues. And I think it's important for students to hear that voice that you don't have to go out and hold a, a poster or march a march, but you can be somebody who writes or somebody who does film or somebody who has a podcast and still be an activist. What event or beliefs or happenings in your younger years led you to be on this journey? I suppose a formative part of my adolescence was the blacklist. My father was a screenwriter, was nominated twice for Academy Awards for his screenplays, but he was also blacklisted. The people who were forced to appear before the House Un-American Activities Committee, which was more un-American, in my view, than any of the people that they wanted to interview. I mean, it's just so horrible to even have something called the House Un-American Activities Committee. I trained as a, a documentary filmmaking journalist. This documentary, uh, which is called Hearts and Minds, and for which I did win an Academy Award, this documentary was really an act of investigative journalism. I wasn't telling anybody how to think or act. Everyone was pro-war or happy had been in favor of the war, all the other people in the documentary had either fought for the country in the Vietnam War or had once been in favor of the war. I want to say this to students. My feeling is if everybody agrees, somebody's not thinking. Think about the people who don't agree with you. I just urge everybody to think uh, hard uh, before everybody just gets in line. I'm going to back up just a minute, though. For those people who may not know about the blacklist, could you just talk about a little bit about what that was? The blacklist existed mostly in Hollywood uh, in the 1940s and 50s. It meant that anyone who uh, had been a member of the Communist Party, could not work. Blacklist in Hollywood mostly affected screenwriters and directors, but some producers as well. Thank you for that expansion on the blacklist. I appreciate that. I wouldn't put a blacklist on having a conversation with anybody. I'd still like to talk to them. Thomas Jefferson once said, if I had a choice of the press or the government, I should not hesitate to prove to, to uh, choose the former. We need a free press more than we need the government. And it's, it's so true. It remains so true today. What continues to motivate you, to guide you, to give you courage in these times? What continues to give me motivation, I don't certainly call it courage. What continues to motivate me is that I think reason can triumph over unreason if we keep talking, keep corresponding, keep standing up for the things that we do believe in. What advice do you have for young activists or young people today? Stand up and be counted and always vote and argue for what you believe in. Argue against your own parents. Argue against your people in Congress. We used to, the Republican Party, for instance, used to have a pretty big tent. Somebody that young people have never heard of today, probably, named Nelson Rockefeller, uh, could be in that tent as a liberal Republican. But so could that tent include a man who ran for president in 1964, Barry Goldwater, an ardent right winger. And Rockefeller wasn't even a moderate Republican. He was a liberal Republican. Yet they could both be in the Republican Party. Today, that tent has shrunk so that um, 
It's controlled now by people who, who ban books. DeSantis doesn't want you to read Toni Morrison. He can say he's not a racist, but he doesn't want Toni Morrison to be read. And even James Patterson, he's banned his books. So anyway, stand up for what you believe. Argue with your friends, your parents. Argue even with your local congressman. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for having conversations with all of these people. One quick last question for you in a time where there's so many opinions and options out there for young people. How do you recommend that they find the truth? First of all, how do I recommend people find the truth? Well, really, it's their own truth that they're going to find, isn't it? Uh, Because uh, one person's truth may be very different from another person's truth. And yet you may be on the same side in a number of ways. And so I think young people or old people, we have to find our own truth and live up to it and love that truth. I think we're all on that journey to find our truth. And it doesn't necessarily stop at at any one age. You keep traveling. I think we do. We're on that journey for as long as we're on the earthly journey. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's been great to talk with you. Thanks a lot. 